Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. I am Astrath, and I welcome you to this. So, okay, I should be hamming it up as I do with all games, but for the last two days that I've had sort of like free time, I've been playing this, and it screwed me over so much. I've never had such bad luck in a game. Anyway, welcome to Talisman. Uh, it's initially a board game made in 1984. This is the digital version of it. And, um, let's just get straight into it. So, solve this save file. Um, goodbye, save file of bollocks. You are gone. So, Talisman is a board game. Uh, it's a dice roller. And now that I've played 44 pissing rounds of it, I can now safely say that I'm experienced in the bullshit. It is a dice roller. Pretty much everything revolves around a dice. And if it doesn't revolve around the dice, it revolves around a random card pickup. Pruitt, this game is not about skill. At least very little of it is skill, it's mostly luck. Let's start a new game. So, I'm going to be playing, and hopefully winning. Ha! Good luck with that. A six uh, opponent match here, that's going to be very nice. And uh, what else do we want here? Do we want anything else? Okay, so the ending is revealed at the start of the game. I could do that, I guess. I could do a random ending. Uh, let's go for a uh, an ordinary ending. Uh, no respawn as well. Screw that. Right. Start the game. Let's go. No. No. Why am I him again? Fine, fine, fine. No. No, we're not doing it. I quit. <laughs> I quit. Right. Let's try again. Different one this time. Okay, I wasn't going to do that last one because I got the same bleeding character. So... We have six characters here, all completely randomized. Let's see what everyone got. So I am a pirate. Uh, whenever another character gambles and loses a gold at the tavern, it is given directly to you to add to your plunder. When you visit the tavern, you may sell any of your objects or followers on the black market instead of resolving the instructions on the space. Discard the chosen cards and gain one gold for each. Whenever you encounter a stranger, you may immediately press gang them into your crew and take them as a follower. The press gang stranger will add three strength in ba three to your strength in battle, after which it uh, will depart to the discard pile. You may only use one press gang stranger per battle. When you would lose a, a life in battle, you may discard one of your press gang strangers to prevent the loss of life. Whenever you roll six on your move, you may sail across the Storm River as you are using a raft. You start in the tavern, your alignment is evil. Of course, me being a Gloucestershire man would get the pirate, wouldn't I? Of course I get the pirate! Why am I not surprised? Right, next we have a Witch Doctor. Uh, whenever you land on the graveyard, you may gain your full complement of spells according to your current craft. At the start of your turn, you may use your powers of healing to do so. Uh, discard any spirit trophies and heal one life for each. Pretty good. Uh, you may use your power of the evil eye on a character that you land on to throw a curse on them. Roll one die. If a one, the curse fails, nothing happens. Two to three, slowness. Their movement is reduced to one space per turn for the next two turns. Uh, four to five is confusion. They take their move as a normal turn, except that you decide in which direction they move. And six is running scared. They immediately move back to the start space. He starts in the graveyard and his alignment is also evil. The priest. You start the game with one spell. So he's got a spell. Great. After rolling the die when praying, you may add one to the score. You may choose to automatically destroy any spirits without resorting to psychic combat. When you destroy a spirit in this manner, you may not keep the enemy as a trophy. But you may gain one spell. You must not use any weapon during battle. If you start in the chapel, your alignment is good. The Dwarf. Uh, you need not roll a die in the crags or the chasm unless you wish to. If you choose to roll, you must accept the result. You may evade creatures and characters in the hills. 
After rolling the die in the cave, you may add one to the score. You need only roll one die if you attempt to open the portal of power by craft. You only need two die. Uh, you only you need only roll two dice in the mines. You are unaffected by the maze. You start in the crags, and your alignment is neutral. The warrior. You may roll two dice in battle and use the higher attack. Sorry. <coughs> And use the higher attack roll to determine your attack score. You may use two weapons at the same time. You start in the tavern, and your alignment is neutral. And last but not least, the assassin. You may assassinate when you attack any character or creature. You cannot assassinate when you are being attacked by another character. When you assassinate, battle takes place as normal, except that your victim may not roll a die to add to their strength. If you win, you must force the loser to lose one life. You cannot take any object or goal instead. You may not assassinate while the, while at the Crown of Command. You start in the city and your alignment is evil. So, here's the win condition. Here's our win condition, the Crown of Command. If a player is on the Crown of Command and no other characters are present, they must cast one command spell at the start of each of their turns. If, a, if the roll is a 1, 2, or 3, the spell has no effect. If the roll is a 4, 5, or 6, all other players lose one life. If a character is on the Crown of Command and there is no other character present, they must encounter the other character instead of casting the command spell. So since I've got no respawns, I believe that means that once you lose all your lives, you're dead. It's permadeath, perma you can't re-roll. So, speaking of roll, let's go! I roll a six immediately. So I can either go to the village, or I can go to the city. Hmm. Okay. Or I could set sail. Let's set sail. Screw it! Let's go to the temple immediately! Screw all you! I'm going straight into the inner circle and I don't care! Roll! Well, <laughs> this could be very quick. I rolled a 10. <coughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, this is luck right here. I rolled a 10, I gain a talisman. Lovely. So you need a talisman to enter the Valley of Fire. We now have that talisman, so we can just stay in this in a circle and just try and build up our power now. That's a pretty good start for us. No, thank you, Temple. That could have gone bad because I could have lost two lives by rolling a two. Anyway, Witch Doctor now will take a roll. Let's see what he's going to get. It's a six as well. Witch Doctor's roll moving to the ruins. He's got to draw two cards. First is an angel. If you are a good alignment, gain one life. If you are evil, you lose one life. He's about to lose a life then. And a gnome! You need only roll one die when opening the portal of power by craft and two dice in the mines. You need not roll a die in the crags unless you wish to. You must choose the roll and accept the result. You may evade creatures and characters in the hills. Okay, so he's gonna... Okay, he's going to go for the angel first. So he's going to lose a life here because of the angel. The angel's going to take a life from him. First life lost! But he's going to take the follower. So our minds will here go through the numbers. People may be wondering what the hell are these numbers. So the red numbers is your strength. You can fight in two different types of combat. Either strength or craft. Strength is red. Craft is blue. The green is your lives. Once you go down to zero lives in the uh, pretty much the one that I've done. Uh, you are permanently dead, I believe, so you got to keep your lives high. One, the one that's one, the yellow one, is your gold. Uh, you can use that to buy um, items, weapons, objects. You can also use it to buy lives and fates and things like that, depending on what square you go on. It can also save you, for example, there may be one card which is you have to fight this guy, or you can give him one gold and he'll leave you alone or something. Um, and last but not least, the purple. The purple are fates. So, each character starts with a uh, different fate roll. So the warrior is a bit nerfed because he's only got he can only have one fate, but a fate allows you to re-roll a die. That is incredibly useful in a game which is a dice roller, and you can use it, I believe, once per uh, turn or something along those lines. Anyway, priest is going to make a move and draw a card. It's a craft three spectre, so he's going to have to fight this thing. He could destroy it. He's playing his spell, Invisibility, so he's just evading it now. Okay, so he doesn't fight it. It stays on the board, but he doesn't fight it. He could have just destroyed the spirit. I'm not sure why he would use his spell on that. I can come back to bite him. 
Right, Dwarf's turn. It's a three. Gonna move to the hills and draw a card. It's a blizzard. Oh, good. Blizzards come with a vengeance and a blizzard envelops the land. For two rounds, all characters, no matter what region they're in, may only move one space per turn. The blizzard then uh, abates to the discard pile. It's not the worst thing for me, to be honest, because I, well, I am here, so it doesn't really matter. Warrior makes a move and draws a water bottle. You do not lose life in the desert. That's pretty useful for him. So the desert, I believe, is somewhere around here. Where is it? Is it here? Is this the desert? Be good if I can actually see the other stuff. No mind. We'll show it later when it's my turn. He's got a strength two hobgoblin for the assassin. You can just assassinate it. He is going to assassinate it and auto kill it. And he gains it as a trophy. The assassin is overpowered as hell. Right, so I can either move to the woods and draw a card, or the desert. Well, I certainly don't want to go to the desert, because I will lose a life, so... I'm going to go to the woods. Draw a card. It's a strength 5 ogre. Of course it is. Of course it is! Can we kill this ogre? Right, here's the battle. We roll a dice. That's a bad roll. That's worse. Okay, so pretty much you take, your, you take your strength or your craft, depending on what you're fighting, and then you add a six-sided dice to the roll. I'm re rolling. Oh, hey! Finally, I roll a six, which is enough to kill the ogre. So I used a fate point to re-roll, and I got a six, which is enough for us to kill the ogre. Really, really good. We needed that start. We needed that beginning. Right, raiders. Has stolen all the witch doctor's gold. Well, he only has one anyway, so I guess it's not the worst thing. A mercenary. Okay. Uh, if you want the mercenary as your follower, pay one gold. If not, he awaits for a character willing to pay him. While he's your follower, he will add three to your strength in battle until the end of the turn, provided you pay one gold. You may only pay one gold per turn. He's actually taken it. Okay. He still needs to get a gold, though, to, um, to then use the mercenary. Right, the ruins. Draws two cards. Pestilence. Ouch. Okay, Pestilence. Pestilence has befouled this region. All characters in this region must lose one life. The Pestilence then vanishes to the discard pile. Aha! I'm not in that region. I'm in the middle region. So everyone else loses a life. Brilliant. And the Shadow. Craft 2. A shadow is lurking in the dark corners of the area. We'll remain here until it is killed. I'm not sure if the warrior just dies first and doesn't even have to fight it. I think that's the case. So, here's death! Warrior loses a life. The assassin loses a life. The witch doctor loses another life. Putting him on two. The priest loses a life. And the dwarf loses a life that went okay so he just still does fight it okay but he's fighting craft warrior rolls a five shadow needs a six here gets a one that's a victory for the warrior okay warrior wins right the assassin now is going to make a move and goes to the city yeah he's going to go to the doctor so he is using one of his gold to heal up a life so now he's got four lives Right, my turn. It's the runes. Or I can go back to the temple. I'm going back to the temple. Roll! That's not good. Oh no, gain one strength. That is good. That's a six. Yes! Five strength now. Let's put it this way. I did two hours of recording. I played as the pissing monk. And I, quite lovingly, oh god. Boy. Okay, don't want to be the witch doctor right now. Um, but yeah, I had maximum. I had four craft and four strength after two hours. In what? Less than a video, I have gotten more strength already. Right. So, witch doctor's dr drawn a ghost. Uh, a ghost materializes uh, in roll one die. So it, it could be the city for a one, for a two, it's the village. Three, it's the graveyard. Four is the chapel, five is the castle, and six is the temple. It has a craft of four. And a strength seven fire dragon. 
So yes, he can get rid of the ghost, but he can't get rid of the fire dragon. It goes to the village. Does the ghost? He now has to fight the fire dragon. He needs a six. Nope, that's not going to save him. Nope, he can't even re-roll to beat that. The witch doctor loses another life. He's on one life already. He has lost three lives. Everyone gets pestilence. He's screwed. The priest makes his move. And he's going to fight the specter. You going to destroy it? No, he's actually fighting it. A four, that's not bad. Yeah, he won. The priest gains a craft. Well, he, gain, he doesn't gain craft, but he does gain a craft treasure. Which we'll get into later. All right, Dwarf draws a card, and it's another ghost. Okay. Another ghost. It's a one. It's in the city. So it's alongside the assassin now. The warrior now makes a turn. And now the blizzard's gone. We can now roll and move. Warrior's going to the fields and drawing a card. It's an instructor. The instructor will remain here for the rest of the game. The instructor is happy to teach you for a price. For every three gold you pay, you must miss one turn and gain either one point of strength or craft. Not useful for, to anyone now, since we're all pretty much poor, but could be useful for later. The assassin now will make his roll. It's a four. Okay, he's going to the woods, drawing a card. It's an imp. You meet a mischievous imp. Roll one die to determine where he teleports you. One is the crags, two is the forest, three is the tavern, four is the ruins, five is the hidden valley, six is the cursed glade. The imp then teleports itself off to the discard pile. All right, it's a five. He goes to the hidden valley. He's in the middle as well. But now he has to draw three cards. <coughs> one's a strength for bandit. One's a fountain of wisdom. And a sorcerer. He's got to fight the bandit first. He can assassinate it. Then he still needs to roll. He does. That's overpowered as hell. That is overpowered as hell. And he still gets the trophy. Right, so a sorcerer. Sorcerer sets shop here and will remain here for the rest of the game. He sells spells at the price of one gold per spell. But only to those uh, whose craft allows me only buy one spell per visit. And the Fountain of Wisdom. Four craft points are found here. You may drink from the fountain once per visit. And take one craft for the fountain add it to your craft. While all, when all four are taken, the fountain vanishes. So he's going to add a fake point. Right. I don't even know what I could roll here. A six would be lovely right now. That's a one. I go back to the woods. Or I die in the desert. I'm going to the woods. Drawing a card. It's a siren. A siren song can be heard throughout the region. All characters in this region must miss their next turn. The siren song then fades to the discard pile. Oh, good. Great. So, I lose a turn, and the assassin loses a turn. Good. Fine, I'll end my turn. Right. Witch Doctor, please don't die. Don't die, it's not good for you. It's not good for your health, mate. Definitely not now. Ooh, he actually got a six and he can go to the graveyard. He's drawing spells. So now he has two spells. He's praying. He gets a one, he's ignored. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> he did all that and just like, no, nope. screw you. Right, priest turn. Five for the priest. Reroll to a two. So he used a fake point there to reroll. He's battling the witch doctor. Okay. Strength two versus strength two here. It's a three for the priest. The witch doctor rolls a four. The witch doctor beats the priest. He's going to reroll. Five. Oh, no, witch doctor. You need. Why did you reroll? No, what? Oh, God. Did the Witch Doctor just die? Yes. Yes, he died. The Witch Doctor's dead! He's already gone! He's already dead! And the Witch Doctor is out of the game already. Ouch. That was fast. Ooh, now the Dwarf! 
He's like, Oi, you killed my mate, the witch doctor. Now I kill you. Dwarf with a strength of three here. Gets a four on the priest. The priest is weakened. But still has enough to tie. And with a tie, it ends in a standoff. No one loses anything. Apart from your turn. The warrior now. Makes his roll and it's a two. He's going backwards. Drawing a card. It's a storm. Storm sweeps through this region. All characters in this region must miss one turn. Storm then abates the discard pile. Great. Well, we just all, we're just all losing turns now. Everyone's lost a turn. The assassin loses a turn. I lose a turn. The witch doctor's dead. The priest misses a turn. The dwarf misses a turn. The warrior misses a turn. The assassin makes his move now. What's he going to do? He's going to have to roll. It's a four. He's getting out of there. Does not surprise me. He's battling. He's battling the priest. He could kill the priest with an auto kill. With the assassinate. Yeah, I, th I think he's just killed the priest. That's two. That's a five. That's enough. That's a, that's a dead priest. That assassin is overpowered as hell. I want him dead. I want him dead. Right. My turn. It's my roll. It's a two. So, I could heal up. So, yeah, I'm... I, okay, so I can go to the Royal Doctor, the castle. Heal up to your life value at the cost of one gold per each. I haven't lost any life. Or I can lose a life in the desert. I will go here. And that's my turn! Lovely. The priest is on two lives now. He rolls a five. He needs to get out of there. He needs to get out of there. Now. He's not fighting the warrior. He's not. He's drawing an adventure card. Which is a cross. When you're evil, you do not lose life in the chapel. If you're good, you do not lose life in the graveyard. It's not the worst thing, to be honest, for a priest. He is a good character, so... It's not bad. The dwarf now rolls. He needs a re-roll there. Gets a four. Goes for the chapel. Which he's fine with. And he's healing a life for a coin. Fair enough. Warrior now makes a roll. It's a four. He can't kill anything. You have to draw something to kill. A guide. You may you need not roll the die in the chasm for or crags or forest unless you wish to. If you choose to roll, you must accept the result. It's a follower. So fair play, I guess, to the warrior. He now has a friend. The assassin now makes a move. It's a one. He's moving into the woods, drawing a card. Oh, it's a strength seven doppelganger. Strength three. Why is he strength three? What the hell happened? What? And he gained a strength point. Okay, that happened. Uh, that's rather frustrating. What the hell happened? Why is he on strength three? Makes no sense. What was his... Yeah, so he may not add one strength. Well, yes, but still. It had seven! Why did it lose? Bloody... Four. I don't understand. Oh, this game. Anyway, guys, I'm going for a break here, but the next episode, let's play Talisman. We're looking good at the moment. We have a Talisman. We're in the inner circle. We're in the inner area. I just don't think we have enough strength or craft for these areas. Specifically, yeah, so like, for example, the mines for craft. Actually. Yeah, all the crypt for strength. You may give it a go, though. Anyway, I will see you then.